the king of kings, the most popular man in the world after Jesus Christ. Do you know Edson Arantes do Nascimento? Perhaps you never heard this name, but you have certainly heard of Pele, the greatest football player in the world. He was born on October 23, 1940 in Três Corações, Minas Gerais, Brazil. Interestingly, he was the son of a former player named João Nascimento and Celeste Arantes, the middle child of the couple. Until then, it was a family of humble origin and his childhood was quite modest, like many other families in the countryside of Brazil. Pele even took jobs as a boot deliverer pastry seller and shoe shiner to help support his family. Pele fell in love with football early on because of his father's example. He played for Atlético Mineiro and Fluminense, traditional teams in Brazil. However, a knee injury prevented him from continuing his career at a high level. In the last years of his playing career, Pele's father was invited to play for Bauru Atlético Clube. Therefore, in 1945, the family moved to Bauru in the state of Sao Paulo, and this change of location directly affected the journey of our little football king. Quickly, Pele began to attract attention in the region for his ball skill. Even when the ball was made of rubber or socks, the boy's talent was already evident. It was there that Pele began to follow in his father's footsteps and take football more seriously. He played in the youth category for some amateur clubs in the region. But at the age of 12, he was discovered by a scout and invited to try out for the youth team of Bauru. It was during this time that the king earned the nickname Pele because he always mentioned the name of a goalkeeper from a team in his hometown whom he admired a lot named Bile. As Pele couldn't pronounce the name Bile correctly, when playing goalkeeper and making saves, he used to shout Segura Pele. The fact is that Bile became Pele and his friends started calling him that in training. After a few months of training in Bauru, he met someone who would be kind of a mentor and coach at the beginning of his career, Valdemar de Brito. Please remember this name. Valdemar was a former professional player who, upon retiring, decided to dedicate himself to finding and training new talents in football. And boy, he hit the jackpot here. The coach convinced the directors of Santos Football Club to give the boy, then only 15 years old, a chance. Valdemar, aware of Pele's exceptional talent, made a bold proposal to Santos by offering his best player. He knew the club was a reference in the country for its care with young talents from the youth categories. Thanks to his friendship with Santos directors, in addition to the promise of a personalized program for young players and the tranquility of the coastal city, Valdemar believed that this opportunity could offer the perfect environment for the growth of the future star. However, the transfer was not that simple. Pele needed to convince his mother, who did not want another player in the family because his father's experience had not been the best. For her, Pele, then 15 years old, should study and become a teacher in Bauru. But Valdemar managed to reverse the situation, and the football gods had already charted his destiny. So on a sunny morning in 1956, Pele, accompanied by hopes and many dreams, traveled by train with Valdemar to the largest city on the coast of São Paulo. Arriving in Santos, Pele lived in a small and simple boarding house. The black boy from the countryside, as soon as he stepped on the land, ran to satisfy his curiosity to see if the sea was really salty. And so began his adventure through Brazil. At just 15 years old, Pele was about to make his mark on Brazilian stadiums and embark on the path that led him to become the king of football. In the first weeks at Santos, Pele admired Pepe, Zito and other training partners who were already great legends of the sport. During this time, he earned the nickname Gasolina, which means gasoline, <laughs> because the boy was responsible for buying cigarettes and doing favors for the older player. An unusual fact is that at Santos, Pele almost gave up football and almost left after a decisive match. It was a final of the regional championship. Pele, about to turn 16, was tasked with taking a penalty that, if converted, would give Santos the title. The young striker missed the shot. After the match and completely devastated, Pele packed his bags and in the early morning tried to leave the dormitory. But luckily, a club kit man appeared in his path and prevented him from leaving. 
At Santos Pele began an 18-year career. He stamped onto the Villa Belmiro field for the first time in 1956 and bid farewell to it in 1974. And Santos Pele transformed the club into a global powerhouse, conquering numerous titles, including six Brazilian championships, two Copa Libertadores and two international cups. It's also worth noting that just 10 months after Pele signing with Santos, the boy was called up for the Brazilian national team for the first time. The prodigious boy was so talented that at just 16, Pele wore the national team jersey, scoring a goal in his debut. But it was in 1958, at the age of 17, that Pele surprised the world, playing a crucial role in Brazil's first World Cup title in Sweden. Initially, Pele didn't play the first games due to an injury. However, when he recovered and was fielded, his presence changed the team's destiny. He scored his first goal in the quarterfinals against Wales, a goal considered the announcement to the world of the birth of a new genius. In the semi-finals, Pele dazzled everyone with a hat-trick against France, leading Brazil to the final. And to top it off in the final against Sweden, Pele exceeded all expectations. At just 17, he scored two extraordinary goals, consolidating Brazil's 5-2 victory and securing the nation's first World Cup. He became the youngest player to win a football World Cup at just 17 years and 8 months. In the next World Cup in 1962 in Chile, Pele scored a legendary goal in the first game against Mexico but suffered an injury in the second game and missed the rest of the tournament. In any case, his resume includes the title of two-time world champion for being part of that constellation. In 1970, during the Brazilian military dictatorship, the Mexico World Cup served to ease the violent atmosphere in the country. Many consider this the best team of all time. Pele scored four goals in the tournament, including the first in the final against Italy. Brazil won 4-1 and achieved the three-time championship. Pele scored more than 1,280 goals in official matches during his career including club and national team game. He played a total of approximately 1,363 official matches throughout his career. On October 1, 1977, Pele played his last professional game, wearing the New York Cosmos shirt, precisely against Santos. In the audience of more than 75,000 spectators, important figures such as the US President Jimmy Carter and boxing legend Muhammad Ali witnessed his farewell from the field. Watching Pele play was so anticipated by everyone that a temporary truce was declared in the Nigerian Civil War so that people could watch Pele play during a Santos tour in the country. He literally stopped the war. Pele's influence in the world transcends the realm of football, establishing him as one of the most significant and inspiring sports personalities of the 20th century. Pele elevated the status of football to a global level, promoting the sport beyond borders and culture. His unparalleled skill, charisma and sportsmanship helped transform football into a universal language of passion, unity and joy. He was one of the first athletes to be recognized worldwide paving the way for football to become the most popular sport in the world. Off the field, Pele used his fame to draw attention to social and humanitarian issues. He worked on various charity campaigns, literacy efforts and social development programs, especially in third world countries. Pele also served as an ambassador for UNESCO and the UN for Ecology and the Environment, demonstrating a commitment to global well-being. The King died on December 29, 2022 at the age of 82. Pele's journey from humble beginnings to a global icon is a source of inspiration. His story highlights the importance of determination, hard work and perseverance. Pele showed that with talent and effort, it is possible to overcome adversity and achieve impossible dreams, inspiring not only athletes but people from all walks of life around the world. If you like this content, please give the video a like to reach more people. And if you want to continue following the journey of other real life heroes, I invite you to subscribe to our channel to receive our next episode of Hero's Journey. For today, we'll stop here. Until next time.